Excursio agreement process is very dynamic. It's very innovative in the way in which it allows the public to participate. So in addition to electing us, they allow the members of the public, anyone in fact, anyone in fact, to attend the meetings and actually present proposals on, on language for the agreement. I work with the, these focal groups, vulnerable marginalized groups, grassroots women. So I work to empower them. Knowledge is power. So I help them in every area of the endeavor. You know, women, we always bring a unique perspective to these types of issues. So to have young, it's, a, it's really an intergenerational conversation and to have young women, mature women, women from all sectors in on the discussion, it's really important. Whatever my path in life will be, that I will always be an advocate for the environment and to say that Eskazu is important not only to the general public but to the world at large. I mean, if you even just look at this agreement, I mean, it's really been led by women in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, in every single way, you know, heading negotiations, representatives of the public, you know, advocating for change, communications. I think we have an extraordinary bunch uh, um, of women who have been involved and we're always looking for more. I'm working in Canary for 15 years and really have a very strong personal value system that um, the poor and vulnerable must have um, justice, must have an equitable share in these natural resources for, 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 for their benefit. The Escazú Agreement is a regional agreement on access to information, public participation, and access to justice regarding environmental matters. And simply put, Escazú is an agreement for the people. It's people-centered. It tries to get them at the middle or the center of decision-making processes regarding environmental matters. That's simply all Escazú means. And it's given that name because it was um, signed and adopted in Escazú in Costa Rica. So that's the purpose um, or the reason behind the name. centers them in the Eskazu agreement, I think, in a way that has not been done traditionally in a lot of environmental treaties. It recognizes that there are people who, because of the conditions they face or the barriers they face, are particularly vulnerable. And these may be the elderly, these may be the poor, these may be youth. And these are persons who need special attention if they are ever going to exercise their rights in the same way and on an equal footing as other people. And the Eskazu recognizes that and it calls upon governments and states that are parties to put in place proper measures to ensure that those people can exercise those rights. So for example, if, let me, if you are trying to get information from the government, you are blind or you are illiterate, government needs to think about ways to accommodate how to, how to ensure that person can get information. Women always seem to think about their children, you know, and we have a lot of singles, families with single with women heading the home, but they always think about their children, the children's future and the environment that they live in is part of the thinking process. So women are very to find solutions. They're the ones who are gonna always come out and say, let's do this, let's try this. And I think the voices, especially grass women's voices, it has never been neglected. Because you have to remember the international process with all these laws and agreements and conventions, the grassroots women are not usually in the process negotiating. But what I like about Eskazu, it had this public participation mechanism. So anybody could come and put their views. This was such a lovely way of negotiating an agreement. 
it's super important that all young people at all levels are involved. We we all live on this earth. We share this home, and I think we need to recognize that after the current you know leaders have gone, we are the ones that are going to be. Well, we're already inheriting, but we're going to be really now in charge. And so it's so important that from an early age, we're involved in what's going on so that it's a smooth transition. It's an easy handover, so to say. I think if we all become better citizens, you know, we take better care of our environment, it would help as well in terms of the way that we treat our, our backyards. You think of like St. Vincent, for example, we're having such a huge issue with dengue fever. And a lot of it is because of poor care of the environment, leaving old vehicles and trash and litter about the place with harbors, mosquitoes. So I think the more that we we, we take up the, this best practice as young people and as people in general, we would start to see a better world. And 10 years from now, apart from just being included, we know that we did our part to ensure that we live in a safe environment. This gentleman who taught us the late Mr. Branch, Roland Branch, and this man, this teacher who taught us geography, he was passionate about the environment. And so my love for the environment developed way back when. We used to physically go, when he spoke, when he taught us about coastlines, he would take us to the castle of Barbage. We would have field trips. We spent, I remember, a very memorable weekend that we spent in Sufre when we were studying the, uh, the rainforest. So this was a man who was hands-on. And when we went to A-level as well, we also had a, a, a Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Simmons who taught us uh, geography. And so we, so, so when you ask me, what Eskazu means to me. It means, listen, it means that I now have an opportunity to advocate for a treaty, an environmental and human rights treaty that is a part of my soul. It's really important for us to bring younger women of the Caribbean um, into the process. Uh, I think, um, you know, it really just, it takes us ensuring their opportunities um, and us also ensuring that we're communicating what those opportunities are uh, and that we, we understand that going into environmental science or going to environmental law or going into environmental policy, um, there's such great opportunities for women who are interested in these areas. And there's a real need, I think, for more and more women to, to play a role in kind of decision making that relates to the environment, um, you know, and, and I, I myself, when I look back at my career, you know, I, I feel like I've been blessed with, you know, choosing to work on environmental issues. Um, and I, I would really encourage, you know, women who are interested to reach out to women who've been a part of, of this, you know, process of this agreement. Um, because I think we're all, you know, kind of more than willing to encourage women to, to join um, this process, not being afraid to advocate, not being afraid to stand up, um, you know, for the importance of these rights and for your right to participate. From where I sit, um, a lot of the women um, are leading the environmental movement in, in, in the Caribbean. There are really some tremendous uh, women, both in government and non-governmental sectors and regional organizations. So I think women really, you know, we need to assert ourselves as leaders and take responsibility um, for that, um, for really advocating for participatory governance and, and shared management of our natural resources.